So today we are going to uh, study about the sequential models, which we have already revised. So today we are just going to have a look at them quickly. Uh, five topics are there: vanishing gradient, exploding gradient, RNNs, GRUs, and LSTMs. So today we are going to do a revision on the same. Uh, let's have a look. So first of all, uh, let's discuss about recurrent neural networks. We all know that in, uh, in RNNs, we have uh, uh, RNN models, we have cell and these cells are uh, basically uh, unrolled over time and uh, we pass whatever information we have instead of uh, we are passing it as uh, you know, at a particular time itself in a simple, maybe a neural network model, we pass whole, whole information at a particular time. While uh, over here uh, in RNNs, what we do is we pass, pass, we pass this information uh, with every time step. Okay, and uh, each and every cell, uh, let's have a look at this. So uh, X1, X2, X3, X4, uh, in terms of text would be our words and we are passing whole sentence one by one through four time steps over here. And first of all, an hidden state is nothing. It's just uh, same hidden state, same uh, hidden state, and that state is unrolled over time. So it's just many versions of the same thing, okay? And we have weights, all the weights are shared. So two types of weights, one is given as input over here, and another is from here. Uh, from the current input and the previous activations from previous time steps, so two, two types of weights plus bias. So three parameters are there, and these weights are shared over every uh, time step. So this is the architecture of a simple recurrent neural network. Then uh, training, so we are training it over time. This is the second layer. You can also apply third layer, fourth layer, and so on up till. Uh, you want the output. So final layer would be output layer over here, which would be the softmax layer. OK, so now. Uh, now gradients, so this is called backpropagation through time because we are backpropagating from the final time step towards the uh, initial one. So these two basically in this direction and and in this direction, so this is back propagation through time because at every time step to one zero, so we are moving through time. So this is how gradients are calculated to find the correct output mm -hmm. to train our model. Basically, mm -hmm. now this is a now we have four types of uh, sequential models: one to one, um, one to many, many to one, uh, and many to many. Many to many can be uh, like uh, this can be language model. Uh, this can be uh, maybe a uh, no language model is uh, many to one, and uh, many to many would be your uh, translation language translation from one language to another language. Okay, and you can have a video uh, classification and all. You can have sentiment analysis, which can be many to one. Okay, so you have so many uh, examples of the same. Then uh, let's. Uh, let's uh, uh, have a look at this one. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of RNNs? So uh, advantages, uh, it can process any length input. Computation for uh, uh, theoretically what happens is theoretically it is saying that computation for a step T can use information from many steps back. So at a time T, all the previous information is stored in the hidden cell, sa cell state and that can be used later on in the network. But practically when you see uh, there is a problem in RNNs and which is what we are going to have a look at, which is called vanishing and exploding gradients. And what is it is, uh, suppose you have a very long sequence and you are multiplying a value, which is maybe a hidden cell state value or maybe a activation function, uh, sorry, activation value. So you are multiplying that value multiple times in a longer sequence. So this value would be reduced. So theoretically it can store uh, definitely uh, previous cell states, but in a much longer sequence, it is not able to uh, give its uh, significance to that value. OK, so also uh, model size does not increase because we are uh, having shared weights. 
so same weights are there uh, same uh, basically same matrix of same size would be there and uh, through uh, through all the time steps okay and the symmetry is there okay now disadvantages of rnn is its computation is slow uh, when it is slow because uh, if if we are having very very uh, longer sequence in that case this rnn becomes slow and secondly it is difficult to access information from many steps back so some so definitely in a longer sequence it's not able to retain its a uh, value its hidden state value if it was a uh, very very long sequence okay we'll see how now the problem is a vanishing gradient and now let's see what is a exploding gradient so in vanishing gradient what we have is suppose we have a uh, we are multiplying uh, we have activation point 1 over here point 1 over here and at every time step we are having point 1 and we are getting we are we are multiplying it uh, moving from left to right and while uh, calculating gradients also while uh, moving from right to left we are multiplying it many times so uh, that value is uh, reduced uh, uh, point 0.1 into point 0.1 into point 0.1 maybe 10 times so that would be uh, point 0.1 to the power 10 which is very very small so significance of activations are lost so that is called vanishing gradient and simply exploding gradient is similar uh, to that suppose we have 1.1 and we are multiplying it many times so uh, that uh, that would become a very very large value maybe uh, that uh, it it will become that much large like uh, it is not able to uh, computer is not able to store that value in your uh, maybe uh, floating point representation or whatever in your system okay so that is called exploding gradient now to uh, now to solve this uh, many things came so basically for vanishing gradient you have lstms and grus and for exploding gradient you have gradient clipping and skip connections we are going to see why and how now uh, so to calculate gradient so why do we require gradient this is clear because we want to calculate the loss so first of all we are training the network we are moving from left to right we are training it Uh, whatever it is given as output uh, we will uh, calculate loss of actual versus predicted and we will back propagate through uh, through time uh, to calculate the uh, this loss with respect to initial parameters whatever h1 was there whatever the initially we have given as input so j j4 by h1 can be calculated as a chain rule that would be uh, uh, H2 by H1 into J4 by H2. We are multiplying this throughout the network so as to calculate the loss of final layer with respect to initial layer. So we can multiply uh, because we know uh, the uh, change in loss of this with respect to this, change in loss of fourth layer with respect to third layer, change in loss of third layer with respect to second layer. So we know this, so that is why we are multiplying it to get this change in this loss versus this loss. So, uh, so that is why we need so many multiplications to calculate the change in loss of final layer with respect to initial layer. Okay, and these values are very very small. So, suppose if these values are very very small, in that case, uh, final value that we will get is extremely small. This is how a gradient will reduce. so its value would be would become very very insignificant okay this is called vanishing gradient now similar thing happens with the uh, exploding gradient now uh, two things uh, that is uh, two things uh, occur whenever there is vanishing gradient issue first is the the dependency between the term t term at time t and the term at time t plus n is lost suppose the sentence was very long uh i am eating something something and i am talking so and i am uh, i'm talking about me so much okay and uh, uh, and i'm talking about me and eating uh, let's say uh, eating something or maybe a fruit so fruit was this fruit was this and i'm talking about fruit so much in uh, so sentence paragraph was very long maybe and then i'm talking fruit was rotten something like that rotten so this was is decided based on the type of uh, thing that i'm eating right so was were so dependency of were uh, so because in between there are many words and if it is a 
and these gradients were very small so dependency between this fruit and this was would be lost because this word uh, because uh, multiply because after we are multiplying 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.1 0 0.1 many times so this value is reduced to very small smaller value and hence its significance is lost even if we are we are talking about the dependency between terms uh, its significance is lost similarly uh, we have wrong parameters to capture the true dependency. Now, what happens is uh, I'm uh, talking about, uh, let's say, uh, this is an example. So in this example, after installing the toner into the, she finally printed her ticket. So she, uh, she was talking about ticket. Now, because she has used tickets previously, so a uh, model might, you know, get confused like, uh, whether she is talking about uh, ticket or whether she is uh, talking about printer and so many other things. So that is why uh, wrong parameters might be captured and then dependency between terms is not. So these two things are there when vanishing gradient occurs. Similarly, what happens is, uh, yes, this is this is called syntactic recency and sequential recency. Now, uh, syntactic. Uh, now, this recency is means uh, the writer of the books is the writer of the books is or are. So, because books is plural, so it will and it is more near to the upcoming word. So, it will consider it's it as more significant than the writer. Uh, okay, so books are and writer is. So it will not consider writer is, it will consider books are because more recent word is books. Okay, so it will check the whichever is the nearby word. So it will, whichever is the most re recent word, it will consider that one because significance of the word that was uh, much uh, previous in the sentence is lost. Okay, so this problem is there. Now, a uh, similar thing is an exploding gradient. An exploding gradient is if gradient becomes too big, if we are multiplying multiplying it many times. Uh, now, if we are, we are multiplying number 0.1 with 0.1, 1.1 uh, into 1.1 too many times, so that number will, would exceed. So to solve this problem, two things happen is, uh, first is we can do gradient clipping. So in gradient clipping, what we do is, suppose we, uh, suppose the number was 1.1, 1.1 uh, 1.1 this was so this would, would be maybe 10 times or maybe 100 times so the number was this so we clip this gradient 1.1 to 1 okay so we instead of multiplying 1.1 with 1.1 we will clip this one and we will replace it with 1 so this is the algorithm where they are saying okay if uh, the, if my gradient uh, is greater than threshold threshold may be 1 so we will clip it we will normalize and scale it to some value and we will reduce it, its value so as to uh, avoid the exploding part. Okay, so first solution to exploding gradient was gradient clipping and second solution was skip connections. So in skip connections, what happens is we reduced some connections. Suppose uh, uh, in network, we were having 100 cross 100. Okay, so instead what we will do is we will reduce some connections. We will reduce some multiplications. Okay, so as to reduce this whole term. Okay, we will reduce few multiplications so as to reduce our exploding gradient. Okay, so these two things are there. Now uh, let's have a look at, uh, now to solve the vanishing gradient problem. So to solve the vanishing gradient we had uh, in the RNNs, we had GRUs and we had our LSTMs. And to solve the exploding gradient, we have this uh, gradient clipping and skip connections. Now, GRU and LSTM are also not the uh, you know foolproof solution to this RNNs, and they they are just a partial solution. We will see how. And uh, these two also do not provide like these two. Okay, these two can solve the vanishing gradient problem to some extent. Okay, uh, we will see how. Uh, now let's have a look at them. So to solve the vanishing gradient problem, we provide RNN with a separate memory. Now let's have a look at this. So this is the architecture, basically uh, not the architecture. So in GRUs, suppose this was a cell, we have always input something and we have activation from the previous layer or maybe the cell state of the previous layer, CT minus one or AT minus one. And we have XT, 
uh, and we apply some function maybe a uh, tan h function over here and uh, we get some output so this was simple rnn cell uh, in gru we have additional uh, uh, calculation over here and this is called g so this point is called gamma or gate so this gate decides how much information we want to store so this gate will uh, you know store something and it will store some uh, it will allow uh, this activation whatever it is calculating uh, from here to uh, store uh, in a cell and suppose i will i will create a cell over here mm. okay let's make a new diagram so in rnns what will happen is we have xt some term and we have ct minus 1 and uh, these two are giving as input in the tan h maybe okay and we are getting this as output uh, to the upper layer this was the layer 1 let's say and we will give this as output to layer 2 and same as we will pass in the next time step at xt is equals to 1 okay so this will happen in a simple rnn but in gru we will add one more thing and that is a gate that is gamma that will decide the whatever that is that will decide the output of this tan h uh, how much this will be stored in a cell state so there will be a cell state so this gamma will decide how much this information will be stored in the cell state and how much this information will pass to the next one and how much will be passed to the upper layer exactly what would be the uh, how much information whatever it is calculated activation whatever it is calculating will be passed to the next at plus 1 okay so this gamma is the basically updating uh, parameter now let's have a look at the equation so equation say uh okay so first of all uh, we need to have a look at the inputs so we have only two types of input one is cell state that is coming from the previous uh, cell state and the uh, present input now for these two we have weights so if you have a look at this equation number this one so this is the uh, previous current previous cell state and current input okay so this is the weight associated with that and this is the biases so uh, values of uh, values of this gate is decided using this again similarly uh, this is the candidate cell state so candidate cell state is nothing it's just uh, so from previous cell ct minus 1 is coming and right now we are calculating candidate using uh, using our tan h okay we are calculating it over here using tan h so we have two things so either we can store previous whatever it is coming if previous word was important we will store this one if present word is important we will store present one so so we have two things so now we have to decide which one to store so this gamma gate this update gate decides which one to store so uh, ct minus 1 is there and we have candidate which is uh, calculating in the current layer so either this current one is important or the whatever information that is coming from previous layer that is important so if gamma is zero uh, so it will store whatever this will become one so it will store whatever that was coming from the previous cell state that was important and it will store its value as it is if uh, this gamma is one if this gate is one this will this mean that uh present value is important and previous value was not important so leave whatever uh, you have previously drop it as it is and uh, whatever you are calculating right now you will store that information okay so this way uh, cell state is updated yes i was like uh, what's the difference between gamma u and gamma r like what, are, what is it like update and reset or something uh, yeah this is uh, update so i will come to this relevant this is called relevant gate so sometimes in gru this equation is not there if you find many you know journals or articles you will not find this equation this is just the relevant gate this is a separate gate uh, this is not the update gate uh, in rnns only four equations are there 1 2 3 and 4 
Sometimes this is just the additional equation and this decides uh, whether the input that is coming from the previous lay uh, layer is important or not. OK, so uh, generally we don't have this equation. Even if you don't write this equation, GR uses perfectly fine. Uh, in later versions, they added this equation. OK. So I hope the architecture overall is clear. So we have two things, either present candidate or whatever which is coming from the previous LC. Two things are there and this update gate decides whether we want to store uh, uh, present value that we are calculating right now or we want to uh, store whatever which is coming from the previous activation, previous time step. OK, so this is a simple architecture of GRU. OK. OK, so let's have a look at LSTM. Now what happens is in LSTM is it is exactly same as GRU. Only two things are changed. Uh, instead of uh, update gate, there was only update gate. Uh, we have update gate, forget gate and output gate. This update gate is also called input gate sometimes. So you will find these two names exactly same somewhere. Uh, now uh, equations of for these three are exactly same because we have only two uh, two things present input and whatever that is coming from the previous time step two things are there. So uh, this is the uh, we have only uh, two types of weights and plus one biases. OK, so these three equations are exactly same. Now uh, the change is there in this equation and this equation is uh, if you have a look at this equation. So this equation is exactly uh, same. But with one difference, instead of uh, gamma update, there it was gamma u and gamma uh, uh, one minus gamma u. So this was one minus gamma u instead of gamma forget. So what is hap what was happening in the GRU was if this was zero, this was one. If this was one, this was zero. While here, if this is zero, this can also be zero. This can also be 0 0.1. This can also be one. Any value. Similarly, if this is one, it can be any value 0, 0 0.1 or any value. So this is the difference. So this is GRU and this is. RNN oh, sorry uh, LSTM. So uh, I hope you can get the difference. So difference is uh, it is asking you. You can it is giving you choice of percentage. How much percentage of the uh, present candidate uh, you want to store and how much percentage of previous uh, cell state you want to store? So you have choice. You can store either a whole percentage of previous one and whole percentage of right now, whatever you are calculating. You can store both of uh, it in the present cell state or you can drop both of it if uh, both of these were not relevant. OK, so you have a choice. How much percentage of uh, uh, the cell state that was coming from the previous time step and the cell state that you are calculating right now uh, to store in the cell state, find the cell state for the present time step. OK, so you have choice. Now this equation is exactly same as the GRU. How to calculate the candidate? So that would be G this is same as GRU, RNN, LSTM. Everywhere it is the same. You have a tan H and you will calculate the candidate from the uh, previous uh, activation plus the uh, present uh, input. And the only only thing that is different over here is now you have a choice. You can store information coming from the both uh, previous cell state and right now candidate cell state. Uh, you can drop both or whatever. So you have a choice right now. OK, so this is the difference. Uh, now one more thing is there. Now after you have calculated the cell state, uh, whatever activation. So first difference was there in this equation. Second difference is in this equation. So this equation says whatever cell state you have calculated, how much portion of it you want to forget and how much portion of whatever you have calculated you want to pass to next activation. Now you have a choice. So you will you have applied tan H over here again. So in previous GRU you can see you just pass whatever you calculate CT, whatever you calculate present cell state, you pass it as it is to the next uh, time step. While in LSTM you have a choice again. How much you want to drop, you can decide. Uh, how much percentage of cell state you want to pass to the next layer, you can decide. 
Okay, so this is so two advantages are here. Okay, uh, for calculating cell state also and for calculating the activation for next time step also, you have two choices, uh, uh, two options uh, available with you in LSTM. Okay, so this is clear. Any doubts about equations? No. Okay. Uh, so this is architecture explained again. So same thing, same thing is happening. Uh, you always have inputs, activations, CT minus one. Uh, you are calculating this one, this one. Three equations are exactly same and this one. Okay, these three equations are exactly same. And now you are calculating the candidate and you are deciding from TANH how much you want to store and how much you want to pass to the next activation as uh, output. Okay, so this is the LSTM architecture. I think uh, you all get this one, so no need to explain, right? Now how LSTM solves this vanishing? So in uh, RNNs, because we are just multiplying all the uh, gradients as we keep on uh, moving from right to left or left to right. Uh, so we are just multiplying every value. Instead, in LSTM, we have choice to store uh, the information and drop the information, or we can pass the previous information and store it as it is, and we have, uh, we have a choice. So we are not multiplying every time. We have uh, stored the information in the sales state and we are uh, doing multiplications with the activations only, but we are not, uh, uh, we are not, uh, uh, we are changing cell state according to whatever we want. So if we want to give uh, weightage to cell state, we will uh, keep it as it is, whatever we want. Now, uh, but LSTMs also, uh, with LSTMs also, we have a disadvantage, like if it is a very longer sequence, and also in that case, because a cell state is at every, uh, you know, at every time step, we are also doing some multiplications with the cell state, right? So uh, if it's a very, very longer sequence, in that case also, LSTMs is not able to solve the vanishing gradient problems. So uh, for that, attention network came, and after LSTMs, basically attention network came, and this was able to solve because we want to give attention to several uh, words. We'll we'll see uh, while studying attentions uh, how uh, these LS how this solves the uh, problem of uh, this uh, in the in the longer sequence how this attention networks and transformers solve the problem of uh, storing these values. Okay, so this was all about sequential models. One more thing is also there. Suppose uh, if you want to compare two models, uh, if you want to calculate the eva uh, evaluation matrix for two models, what you can use is perplexity. You have already worked with, uh, you have already seen what per perplexity is in the language modeling for n grams, I guess. So suppose you are doing language modeling. So language modeling is nothing you want to predict. You have four words, you want to predict fifth word, right? Uh, and if you are calculating perplexity, so perplexity is reduced in uh, these sequential models. If you want to compare two models, like you want to compare a neural network with a simple RNN or with a GRU, uh, you can calculate perplexity uh, for this language modeling itself, problem itself. Uh, you apply language model to simple neural network, to RNN, to LSTM, to GRU, and you calculate perplexity. And if when you calculate the perplexity for this LSTMs, you will find it uh, very good. So perplexity is, um, I mean, complexity of the model is very low in case of this LSTM. So it is given good re good results in LSTM. Similarly, I think cross entropy is there and so many other evaluation metrics are there. So to compare them, you can use those evaluation metrics and you can check uh, that LSTMs work better. Okay, so that was it. A review about uh, the sequential models. Uh, and your unit three, module three is completed. Uh, we will, uh, we have a quiz tomorrow.